Okay, today I'm with Jerry Fisher with Orchid Limited in Plymouth, Minnesota. And Jerry has multiple greenhouses of orchids. Jerry and I have been working this summer on a few tests. He's installed our commercial oxygenating system where, of course, we're raising dissolved oxygen. This is what we call our 2250 model. This is the biggest model we make. This is all nothing but electronics. So we are going from 110 power down to 12 volt DC amperage, which means this is only drawing a few watts an hour. It's uh, very inexpensive to run. And then what's creating the oxygen is these anodes that go into the water. That is what they call a super fine, smaller than a micro bubble, nano bubble. It raises the dissolved oxygen 50% higher than what a bubbler can do. And we refer to that on our site. You'll see that in some of our aquarium experiments of why bubblers do not add much oxygen. A bubbler is basically a paddle wheel bringing ambient air into the water. So when it breaks the surface where this is down in the water, separating the hydrogen molecule from the oxygen molecule and reintroducing it at 100%, the molecule has been restructured and it raises the DO. Pretty simple, and we got some pretty compelling results. All right, well, here we are with two groups of Paphiopellums and Phragmopedium hybrids. These are tropical lay slipper orchids. This side had super oxygenated water, this side did not, just our regular water out of our cisterns. So, we're just going to take a look at a couple of these plants here on, on the roots to see how they look. Here's one of the uh, super oxygenated, oxygenated water plants you can see. Got a really good root system. A lot of new tips going everywhere. There's quite a few roots. Now we're gonna take a look at one without. And by the way, I have not switched these around or anything. It's been in the same tray for the last three months. Here's one without. And I want you to notice something about this particular plant. You see these little brown fibers in here? Those brown fibers are called rhizoctonia. And it's really not very good for orchids. And you can see that the roots aren't as good looking. There are fewer healthy tips and there's just less roots altogether. Eventually what rhizoctonia does is it just takes over the plant, blocks all the roots from getting any water eventually, and then the plant collapses and dies. By using that super oxygenated water, that kills that. Okay, here's two plants. They're picked at the same time with the same level of bud development when I picked them out three months ago. They're way down in the growths. And you can see this one's ahead of this one, oh, by at least a couple weeks. So it does show that they do seem to advance the bud growth. And if you just look on the surface too, you can see there's just a, a lot more root activity here than there is on this side. So that's positive for the super oxygenated water. Okay, here are a couple of other trays that we've been doing these experiment on for the last three months. So this side again is super oxygenated water. This side is not. And I think you can see some pretty dramatic differences in two of the groups. So these dendrobium papilios have great foliage. They look really wonderful. They're tall. These plants over here have lost leaves. They have not done well over the summer. And we'll look at these Macodes patilla. This is a terrestrial orchid from Southeast Asia. Beautiful leaves. Notice how this side has a greater number of growths, wider leaves, bigger leaves. There are, you know, a few plants here that really look good. And then if you look at these over here, they have actually sort of declined. There's a couple that are okay, but they're not as big as the other group side by side. This particular plant just has not done well. You can see that it's rotted at the base and it's just not doing as well. The Phalaenopsis in the front, really, and, and this is the thing about super oxygenated water. I think it helps most plants, but it may not help all plants. So we don't see as many differences there, um, you know, other than the fact that there might be a few more roots in this group. But here's the thing. When you have super oxygenated water and it's summer and it's hot, you don't get the anaerobic bacteria that are in the compost, which actually 
kills off the oxygen supply to the roots and causes this kind of death or this kind of death. It, it just shuts down the oxygen, the plants just can't grow, the bacteria take over in the plant. There are several different kinds of bacteria, one's called Pseudomonas, and it tends to really destroy orchids in the summer. So, in my mind, if I have the ability to use super oxygenated water, I'm going to, to prevent that kind of loss. Okay, here are two other trays. These include Phalaenopsis. It's a hybrid we made over here. Same hybrid, they went in the same size. And some Stanhopia hybrids. And here you can see these particular Stanhopias, although they look fairly similar to these, these do seem to have a few more leaves coming out. The Phalaenopsis, the, the difference is pretty dramatic. You can see, I'm gonna pull these out here. Just get them side by side so you can really see what I'm talking about. So these are the ones that are with the super oxygenated water, and these are the ones without. And I think you can see that the, the leaves on these are, are broader, a little larger. There seems to be a lot more root activity outside of the pots. Now let's take a look at what's going on inside the pots. So we'll just grab some random ones here, like. These are rooted together, they're so happy. Um, here's some plants here with good roots inside, a number of them outside. So that's good. Let's just take a look at these. Not as good. A few roots around the top, the bottom ones. Again, without the oxygenated water in the summer, it's very possible that you know that you can just take a look at all these the uh, anaerobic bacteria were having their way. This one's a little better, but there's still some death here. And this one seems to be in pretty good shape. Now, if we look at these, this is one that's just kind of average, not as good. But these, let's take a look at that root growth and leaf size. Here's another one. These things are very happy. So what does this mean? This, what this means is that with the extra root growth and broader leaves, wider leaves, when they develop flower spikes, they're probably gonna be a little earlier than the ones without the super oxygenated water. And also, the flower spikes will be more productive and the flower should be larger when using super oxygenated water. Okay, now Jerry's brought us up to his lab. You can see he's got uh, Petri dishes and all sorts of double secret stuff going on here. But he's going to do a dry weight on them, which is the way everyone understands this. And you'll see that in a second. Uh, again, pretty compelling numbers on that. So here we are with the non super oxygenated water that was being used during the summer. You see some little root death there. Now we're going to weigh this plant. This is in grams. So we're looking at about 51 grams for the non-oxygenated one. Now here's the plant grown with super oxygenated water. Let's see if I can get all these roots on here even. So you're looking at 75 grams. That I would consider to be a pretty significant difference. Hey, we just want to wrap this up and thank everybody for, for taking a look at this today. I think I think an orchid place is as good as any. I mean, Jerry has a great operation. Uh, I want to show you something that's even for the hobby growers. Uh, this, this, these are several hundred dollars. These are not pumps, but a simple package. This is the emitter like you've seen in the, uh, the electrode that goes in the water. There's no hose, no noise, and very little power half amp DC, which is about seven watts an hour. These only run about an hour a day. So if you're just doing a five gallon bucket with this unit, this is designed for 10 gallons, uh, you'd, you'd be totally saturated in probably a half hour. So you mix your nutrients, you do it, get yourself an O2 grow unit, and you'll see the results for yourself.